You're watching CES Live, powered by Ustream.tv, the most powerful way to stream live video, and by Utech, makers of the TriCaster family of broadcast and streaming systems. And now, CES Live. Hey guys, welcome to Geek Beat. Oh no, I didn't just make the mistake. Dave, how did you let me do that? <laughs> Welcome to CES Live 2015. I'm Callie Lewis. I'm Jill Shar. <laughs> and we have all sorts of great coverage coming to you from CES. Uh, now, 3D printing, huge deal here at CES. Bigger than ever. Bigger than ever, I would say, for sure. Uh, last year, they had, I don't know, a tiny little section mm -hmm. here at CES. I mean, it felt tiny compared to, compared to what it is now. What yeah. it is now. It's kind of, I've seen some stuff over here in the main halls. Uh, sands, like you were talking about earlier, yeah. full of 3D Enormous printing stuff. Enormous section in the sands, yeah. But you know what? 3D printing, scanning, there's even more to it than just what you think yeah. of when you think 3D printing. So, Wolfgang uh, from Velodyne, Velodyne, <laughs> LiDAR is here to, to show us all about that. So welcome. Well, thanks for having me. <laughs> you know what, Hap, Vel Vel Velodyne, people might know that name from your other part of the business. Yes, I mean, Headphones. we... Velodyne has been in business for 30 years and we make awesome subwoofers, which yes. are essentially distortion free. And that's what Velodyne is known for at CES. We have been participating here for many, many years. Yeah. But recently the car companies have come here, so now we also have a present for LiDAR. Nice. So actually, since we're talking about your other business, the, the V-Bolds over here that you have, uh, let me get a close up of that for you. Uh, these are headphones that you guys are giving away here at CES at geekbeat.tv slash giveaways. So you guys go and uh, check that out and enter to win. So, but let's talk about LiDAR. Yes. Yeah. What is it? Tell me all about it. Well, in essence, it's just a very smart way to measure distances. And so if you want to get a little geeky. Let's get geeky. That's okay. what we're here for. So it's essentially a pulse of laser light that's being sent out and we measure the time it takes to go from here to you or to a wall or somewhere and the time to come back. Mm -hmm. And from the speed of light, we know what the distance is to that wall. And what's unique about our product is that we have up to 64 lasers in one device. So we do these measurements that I just talked about 1.3 million times in one second. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so and what kind of specificity can you get? Say that? In, in, in terms of uh, you know the depth of it or the specificity yes. of the, the so contours? Yes, so we can look about a little bit more than 100 meters. Okay and to centimeter accuracy. Okay. We can't see millimeter, but centimeter accuracy. Okay. And the lasers in there, they're oriented like this. So they, uh, they uh, make an array, sweep? and then they turn around all the way, 360 degrees, up to 20 times per second. Oh, that, this, is all, this is all the laser and the yes. whole thing? So this is our latest product. Uh -huh. This is, uh, we call it the Velodyne Light Up Puck, for okay. obvious reasons. <laughs> Light Up Puck has a shape of an ice hockey puck, a little uh -huh. bit larger, but almost like that. And this one has 16 lasers inside. They also rotate all the way around. Uh -huh. and they go 15 degrees up and 15 degrees down. Wow. And, and they capture the environment in, in real time for mm -hmm. 3D maps. So for 3D maps, that's the application it's for. But There's you mentioned car companies. So describe how that's all coming together. Yes. So Essentially, there's two things you can do. One is real-time mapping. Mm -hmm. So you drive around, you look what's around you, and then you make decisions on what you see you want to avoid. If there's a person right. stepping in front of your car, um, the sensor will detect that, and then the computer of the car will decide that's a person. I shouldn't drive them over, most of the time. <laughs> so, and then it. I thought you got points for that. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. We're not going to get there. Okay. Okay. Um, and then the car will will hopefully stop, or will swear around, or whatever the program are programmed to do. Um, okay. That's the real-time application where you see everything in real time and then make a decisions to avoid collisions. Sure. Right. But you can also record this data and then make a map out of it. This is what Google Bing Maps does yeah. and Nokia, here.com. They, I'm sure you have seen the street view kind of applications yep. with mm -hmm. 360 degree images. But in the background, they actually take LiDAR data to get the 3D environment. So you know if a house is further away or a house is closer. They don't show you the LiDAR data, but in the model they that they use. Yes. So they're taking photos with a different machine and then sort of mapping those photos to yeah, your the, models? Yeah, the photos are taken with cameras. Okay. They just have a lot of them 
so it goes around. Uh -huh. But then they also have our sensor on it, so some of these collection vehicles, you see that. Um, you, s you see the cameras that look in all directions, and you see our sensor spinning, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, driving around. And as I said, Microsoft has hundreds of vehicles, and Nokia has hundreds of them mapping the world, and there's some other ones uh, yeah. as well. So essentially, y your systems are gathering all this data. The companies that you're working with that use your, your systems are, are m doing the maps. A and that will go directly into our cars as technology to help us avoid collisions, things yes. like that. What other use cases uh, do you expect to see in the future for, for this type well, of Well, the other technology? use cases is the, the mapping. People start because they're becoming so light and small. Mm -hmm. And actually, what's really amazing is the price came down from $80,000 to $8,000. Hey, we so dropped to zero. Here we go. <laughs> and so people can actually afford it to put it on UAV. I think there's a big mm -hmm. presence here at CES as well for yes. drones. Yeah. So people started off with putting GoPro cameras on there, making it pretty pictures. Mm -hmm. But the next step is to actually take quantitative data and measure things, flying around a building, seeing what the coastline looks like. Yeah. Um, a lot of surveyors and engineers are already using mm -hmm. drones like that to exactly, get, yeah. look, take a peek at you know the middle of a bridge where a human couldn't get to, but yeah. they can fly a drone out there, e exactly. and see and cracks, things like that. Another application is robots. Mm -hmm. So, and the robots not so much like the ones you might see out of the movie, but these are like factory automation. I mean, mm -hmm. yes. Amazon.com has shipped millions of products, and they had to move around products and warehouses. Mm -hmm. So they have a, yod a lot of warehouse automation technology. Um, that moves around packets, uh -huh. and they need to make sure that they're not running anything over. If a coworker fell over, th those robots or these like forklifts can't run anybody over. So that's why they use our technology to um, to make sure there's nothing in yeah. the way. Are there any privacy concerns with stuff like this? You know, in terms of all of these these uh, these cars and robots and drones constantly, you know, all the cameras kind of getting all this information. Uh, are we seeing any, uh, obviously we're seeing a lot of security concerns with that kind of stuff, but what, what are your thoughts on it? Well, I'm sure there's always concerns about privacy, but I don't think they're justified because what you can't really recognize a face with our sensor. You can see there's a person, okay. you can see they're waving their hands. Um, if there should be a person in the picture, mm -hmm. but you can't recognize who that is. That would be extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. So essentially, so what you're you're saying is, as we're driving down the road, it's gathering all this data. It's not saying, oh, that's your buddy John, run him over, not <laughs> his girlfriend. Right? No, it's more the mother-in-law. But uh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Absolutely. So you can't you can't no, physically you can't. tell a part exactly. a, a one human from another. But you could you could see differences. This is a big truck, and this is a pedestrian. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's safer to hit the truck because there right. would be more material damage than actually killing a well, injuring a person. Sure. Right. If, if I mean that's a difficult situation, obviously. But that's that kind of differentiation you could you could probably make. Yes. Well, that's actually a very interesting use case. You know, yeah. you're driving down the road. You may not see all of the data, but your cameras and your sensors and and your car will and it will help you make the intelligent decisions um, based on algorithms like that. Okay, hit a car, not a person. <laughs> yeah. Because you're safer, in, at least yeah. in that situation. Yeah. What do you think about that, Jill? I'm thinking this this device can help, it helps robots see more clearly, as you're saying. Yeah. It helps the machines differentiate between robots and humans, or machines and humans. Are you on the side of the impending robot apocalypse getting uh -oh. into the <laughs> overlords uh, now? Well, I think if they are, um, how you say that task which are mundane. <laughs> uh -huh. I don't mind giving that up. I drive every morning to work for an hour and well, I mean, I'm from Germany. Obviously, all German car companies say driving, there's a the pleasure of driving in the ultimate driving machine. <laughs> but um, if you drive every morning the same way and you get stuck in stop and go traffic, I happily let the robot or the, comp the car oh, yeah. take over and yeah. I can tune out or I can't text yet, but eventually, I guess. Mm -hmm. That, that, that does sound good. Possible, yes. <laughs> Watch Geek Beat. Awesome. Yeah, right, right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. That was a good answer, yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Wolfgang. That is super good information. I've seen your cameras in action on Ford cars uh, last year, actually, at the auto show. Yeah, Ford Motor Company exactly. and GM Motors. Actually, all the car companies have one of our sensors. Some of them show them more publicly, and some mm. of them just do it right. secretly in the research labs. But all of them have one of ours. I was very, very impressed. Yeah. 
So thank you so much for uh, letting the audience know all about this, uh, this technology. And if you guys have any questions, uh, just leave a comment below. And be sure to watch all of the coverage here at CES Live at geekbeat.tv slash CES Live. But not in your cars, not yet. <laughs> no, that's a good point. Thank you. <laughs> Safety first. <laughs> I'm Callie Lewis. I'm Jill Shar. Bye.